Sorry, I'm sorry. You're doing great, Dom. Thank you. You're just, you're just, you're just, mm, chef's kiss. <laughs> couldn't, couldn't be any better. A, a, little, a little kiss on the forehead. Thank you very much. Uh, Absolutely. Okay, center square, complete two caves or grotto dungeons. That's a very quick, that's a very, very quick center square. I actually, so I, I, in terms of the early rushable squares, I think I prefer this one to the consumable one because I, I think there's a little bit more time for things to like go wrong for the person who plays a little more optimally to pull ahead. And it's a little bit uh, less up to the variance of the boss. Like I feel like with the consumable ones, sometimes, you know, Bofa just throws out some, some moves that stall, you know, whether yeah. he does a move where your knives just miss for like a couple of throws. This one, I feel like, really gives a better opportunity for the faster player to snag it first, which is very interesting. So there's a lot of a lot of early stuff here, by the way. We have Tree Sentinel on the board. We've got Cave and Grottos. We've got Needle for Bach. We've got the Consumables, three and friendly yeah. NPCs, Wet Blades. This is, a, this is an early game board uh, for yeah, half these, of it. These early game squares, I feel like my my impression. Look, I'm not here to play any sort of player favoritism. Okay, sure, I'm sure. going to be completely uh, impartial on my commentary here. But I got to say, my first impression is that these early game squares perhaps favor Tom a little bit, maybe because he's a really efficient uh, speed runner. He's he's just a really efficient player in general. Whereas Bushy tends to play more on the side of uh, like strategy, mind games sort of uh, prepping certain squares while he's doing other squares. So I'm interested to see if these very quick rushable squares actually end up giving Tom a little bit of an advantage and how uh, Bushy can counteract that or react to it. Yeah, this is, uh, I, I do think it's going to be interesting where does the mind game pretty much outspeed the speeder, you know, where it's like if it's complex enough to where even speed could not make up for it, uh, I think that'd be very interesting to see. Um and yeah, look at the classes here. It looks like Bushy is hovering still yeah, over Vagabond. I'm not sure if he's just sticking with it because Alabaster Lord Sword is one of the best weapons. So uh, tell me what's so good about Alabaster Lord Sword here. So the thing with Alabaster Lord Sword is that it's got pretty low stat requirements. It does have 18 intelligence to wield it, but the the beauty behind Alabaster Lord Sword is that it's a great sword, and if you have the intelligence to wield it. Um, the stamina consumption for charged R2s is ridiculously low. It is, it's pretty much a fully okay. charged, uh, like charged R2 is about as, uh, much of a stamina consumption as on some weapons in R1. Um, so you can spam those back to back. You can maneuver in boss fights way more easily. You don't really have to pay attention to your bar. It is, it's just really, 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 really nice. That's a very powerful weapon. And both players right. going in. And Time has officially begun. Looks like both players are on the vag on the are on the vagabond still, so they are both uh, alabaster lord sword enjoyers. It seems like. Looks like Bushy did start a little bit later here than NPT, going straight Maybe in. He, though. Uh, didn't keep an eye on that timer, perhaps, and that with this uh, completing two caves or grotto dungeons in the very center, if Tom ends up rushing that right away, he will have a little bit of an advantage on that. Yeah. No, I, for sure. You could go for Soldier of Godric and Bullfight, I guess, in this case, but Soldier of Godric yeah. does take a while getting through um, getting through the Cave of Knowledge. It does take a while to get through there, for sure. Uh, yeah, and I think if, if you end up going for the Soldier of Godric route, I think that puts you at a disadvantage for these other squares. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. Especially because then you have to backtrack a little bit. Uh, as well. So I think going first for Kale, then maybe going for Bofa into going back to Soldier of Godric might be the play here. You also have consumables. So I'm, I'm expecting here a consumables on Bofa and then both players trying to rush back to Soldier of Godric to get both caves in that case. Alternatively, if they want to get a head start on other squares and maybe even give up that center square, they could just go right for the, uh, uh, the demi-human duo and start getting that that Bach progress and then maybe like loop back to Bofa if uh, the other player hasn't gotten it yet. Maybe. Could be an interesting play. The, the to tough thing of... here is uh, having a wieldable weapon though, right? You don't have uh, a wieldable weapon in this case right now. They can't wield it just yet. Don't have the stats for it in strength, I believe, and intelligence. So you could wield, by the way, Alabaster Lord Sword without the intelligence. Uh, you just don't get the magic on hit 
from that yeah, weapon. I've heard that the damage is honestly like acceptable without the int requirement, but I think it does also take more stamina to, to swing when you don't have it, right? Yeah, it is way okay. more, way more stamina. So uh, personally for me, I, I would definitely always level the intelligence on Alabaster. I think it's worth it, uh, to be honest. Um, you know, I just realized we've been saying Bofa as if everyone knows what we're talking about. We, <laughs> we should probably ah, yeah. <laughs> say it, we're talking about Beastman of Faramazula, which does abbreviate to B-O-F-A, which is why we say Bofa for that. So for anybody confused, hopefully that clears that up for you. Yeah, it's uh, one of the first bosses in Limgrave, the one in the cave that just hangs out and eats a corpse. Yeah, I don't know why everybody thinks like we're being weird when we say Bofa. It's a perfectly reasonable thing to say. <laughs> and as we can see here, by the way, uh, Tom going straight for the cave here. And Bushy not even considering it. Going actually for what looks to be uh, It looks like Bushy's Bach. going towards Bach, yeah. Okay, so th this is actually kind of what I was like thinking might happen here. Uh, I think that like... This is a really favorable thing for Tom to do. And I think this is also like if Bushy, you know, recognize and respects that Tom is a really fast player, I think it might be a good call for him to just go for a more strategic play instead. And here and we have the strengths those, on the strategy. Uh, here we have those headshots, by the way. If you time those correctly, you get those headshots consistently on Bofa to where, wow. you know, you don't have them running around the arena. Oh, that's so clean. Very, very nice. There we go. Wow, nice. That's really, okay. Consumable only, done. So he needs one more cave or grotto. Let's see if he goes for the Soldier of Godric. I'm assuming he would, but he didn't actually open up his map and pour it out. So maybe he's gonna go grab Torrent first, so he doesn't have a, a huge play. run back, and then goes for uh, the Soldier of Godric uh, cave, because then he doesn't have to, you know, I'm assuming he already thinks, okay, I already got consumables. And even if Bushy uh, was, you know, sniped at it, I don't think he'll go for Soldier of Godric afterwards, potentially. And Bushy here is just making a beeline straight for a demi-human duo, which I think is a very strong play for him, actually. Yeah. Nice. I, 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 think, I think smart plays from both players here. I do wonder, what do you think Tree Sentinel is going to drop for a Halberd? 100% Dragon Halberd. Literally, like, there, no shot at anything else. I'm gonna say Lucerne. I'm gonna say Lucerne. I, I don't know why. I, I like I like gambling on the fact that it's a shitty halberd just for fun. Yeah, I, I have this theory that once you see one OP weapon, like once you see Alabaster Lord Sword, the first check for every other weapon is also gonna be an OP weapon. That's my theory. Mm, that's super fair. Yeah. So it's just the way the RNG works. I'm and... I, I'm pretty sure that's how statistics works too. I learned that in 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 college. Really good fight here by Bushy, by the way. Um, having a really solid uh, demi-human chief duo fight. Yeah. We, we've seen it where some people had a little bit of a hard time with the combos of demi-human, but he's getting like a lot of hits off. And as we see here, by the way, even without the intelligence on the Alabaster the Lord Sword. pretty crazy. It's good. It's really, really good. It's a good weapon. There he has the sewing needle and is going to Stranded Graveyard now. Oh, okay. he's still contesting. Yep. Uh, honestly, that's very... I'm surprised. I'm a little surprised that he's contesting this. Very because interesting. Seeing how quickly Tom got consumable only, I feel like... I mean, does he get any other benefit out of this? No, not really. Hmm. And I guess this is faster for him than going for Beastman of Farmazula. Yeah, but here's, here's Tom going for Demi-Human Chiefs now. So, depending, depending on how this fight goes for Tom, this might be actually a square for Bushy. Yeah, it could. Uh, depend Because the mini de demi-humans, they can really throw a wrench into things. Yeah. Especially if you're trying to focus down uh, the actual boss itself. Like, he hasn't gotten a single attack off yet on this, uh, this demi-human. This is really, really fast. That damage is, like, actually crazy. This is actually going to be really, really close. Uh, I think Tom actually is going to get this before Bushy I does. Think, yeah, I mean, I think the second demi human is very risky go down play, very though. Easy. This is bad because then, like, here's the thing. Um, well, I mean, 
Tom hasn't talked to Bach yet, though, has he? I, or maybe he has. I don't think he has. Do you, so he do, does Bach not come down here until you talk to him? Yeah, you have to talk uh, to him. First, I'm pretty sure. That's right. You have to, you have to make him not a bush anymore. Wait, hold on. Bushy's here. Bushy's here. I think Bushy's got this. Oh, this is really close. And that's close. the center square, too. There goes to Bushy. Yeah. We With that little bit of stream delay. Yeah, we have a serious stream delay on Bushy. See, hold uh, on. Let me refresh. See Bushy was able to complete that. Let me refresh. And grabbing that center square is huge for Bushy. I think that is going to give him the space he needs to really slow down and play more strategically. And I think Bushy's also going to get this, like, back-to-back -back immediately get the needle. That's crazy, yeah. yeah. He's a little bit ahead right now on that on that Bushy, uh, on that box square. Because he didn't go for gatekeep. He went for the uh, the other, the Agil uh, Grace, which is closer to Bach. Yeah. Bushy playing like the long game on this early game and actually coming out on top. That's crazy. I that I think that was a bit of a gamble. There's a there's Bushy's a part. serious and delay on my end. What and the hell? I think that Tom. I feel like in Tom's position with this, he may have been at a. Oh, he killed Bach. Oh my God! No. Oh Bach, why no? <laughs> Do we have three friendly NPCs on this board, or was that just a spite kill? I'm trying to figure out why Bushy's so far behind on my screen. Apparently, it's it's a really really long delay because he marked that uh, that needle. It uh, seemed a good it seemed a good five seconds before we saw it actually happen. Yeah. But, that's uh, okay, crazy. there there are friendly NPCs, so Tom is not just going on a killing spree here. All right. Yeah, Ooh. right there next to the center square. Oh, Bar Bush whipping out the the both the, of them the, die. The, wow. What a what a disaster on all fronts here. That's crazy. Yeah, Tr uh, Tree Sentinel smacking the hell out of Bushy and Vare just not having any of it today. Yeah, he had the. I almost called it combustion, and then I look uh, my my brain. I can't shake the Dark Souls three out of it. It's it's a permanent fixture in my brain at this point. <laughs> what, what is the spell called? Uh, catch tell. flame. Catch flame. Catch flame. That's what it is. Okay. I promise I, uh, I've played this game before. I, I've definitely played Elden Ring many times, at least once. <laughs> well, luckily this is why we have the, uh, the universal timer, by the way. So even if Bushy is a little bit behind, uh, at least we, you know, we can make sure on his stream that he is on the same timer as, as NPT. So, and of course we got to give a huge shout out to our lovely refs who are always keeping everybody accountable, making sure everything is, uh, you know, making sure us commentators can just kind of take it easy and just appreciate the game for what it is. Yeah, appreciate the uh, appreciate the gameplay and the the quick wit from Josh. Yeah, we 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 got the e we got the easy job here, Dom. It's it's great. I I had it. I think it was like last week. We had one of the bingo squares, and one of the refs was, was like, "This is a lot of counting." Apparently, there's a lot of. Uh... <laughs> board, I remember this. The board had like like 10 squares that were like defeat x number of things yeah it was like it was like kill eight Lyurnia a boss or eight limgrave bosses kill yeah. six Lyurnia bosses the uh, five caleb bosses uh collect this and they're like i have to count a lot like where's my notepad <laughs> i was like poor ref's gotta break out the the excel spreadsheet for for bingo <laughs> yeah <laughs> But uh, it looks like we got Bushy finishing off the Tree Sentinel here as long as he can make it through the rest of this fight without taking a single hit. Which, I, you know, Bushy, he's very well practiced. And, I, you know, there's a, I think he's got it. Yeah, as we can see, the board man. did light up. And there's the final hit. And there's very him nice. marking the square on a stream. Yeah, we got a little bit of delay, but nothing we can't uh, talk around. Did you see yeah. what weapon he got? I did not see what weapon he got. No, he. he I didn't he, see it. Oh, there it is, Commander <gasps> Standard. Okay. Commander Standard. That's like a. I'd say that's like a B tier. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Probably like a B tier weapon. Yeah, I mean it's not bad. I mean the buff like Halberd makes it. I, I'd say B tier. I'd say B tier for yeah. sure. Because on its own the weapon's pretty bad, but the buff is really good. Looks like he's doing a twin blade check here. Or is it? No. It's, it's, it, no. Never mind. It's the uh, wet knife. Right. right. Wet blade. Yeah. Because the, the wet. Yeah. Yes. Got the wet blades in the top right corner here. And uh, NPT already going for Margots. We don't really have a Remembered Square besides the Colossal Armament. That's the only one this time. So I wonder who's going to go for it first. It's going to be giving away a lot of information in this case. Not yeah. super worth it either to really push it because 
uh, you know, you do get a lot of money, but also kind of gives away that you've been in Stormville throughout the entire time. Um, I'm wondering, does he have a colossal armament to use for it? I don't think either of them has checked the the twins yet. Yeah. So we'll find out. He may just be prepping it. It's 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 a good way. I mean, if you know you're probably coming through Stormvale anyways, it's a good way to just kind of spend some time and and strategize and also you know get some runes so you can make your character a bit stronger. Yeah. Oh, Gostock. So he's gonna open the gate. And then he's going to double back around and kill Gostock for the third NPC. That's nice. That's some good synergy there, I think. Oh, yeah. It's not a bad idea, actually. Although it looks like he went back to Stormhill Shack. Did I see that right? He did. I wonder what he's doing. Lyurnia, I guess. Maybe checking. Could he be checking Watchdog Staff for a Colossal? I don't think so. That's probably no. a pretty slow check. Yeah, most most of the players check for colossals either from merchants themselves or they go for the uh Oh Pod friend, pod dude, pod friend! We haven't had a pod, pod friend. friend We haven't had a pod oh. friend in like a million years. Pod, pod friend oh, wait, am I facing the right? Pod friend. Wait, no, this way. No, oh, you, you had it, you had it, you had it. Wait, no. You had it. No, yeah. <laughs> pod friend. I don't know. Uh, I don't know how directions bro, work. I, I, it's been a long time since we've had a pod friend, dude. I, I'm out of practice. I gotta say. Yeah, it's. Uh, I, I I completely just didn't realize until the very end there. Yeah, he was I there just, and gone in a blink of an eye. It's well, not just that. It's just like with this format, you know, like most of the time people don't think it's worth going for the Alexander Jarshar because half the weapons just the the weapon art isn't really worth picking the jar shard for. Yeah, I mean, unless you, unless you've got Uchi, which as we know, Uchi is a much rarer sight to see in these matches now. Yeah. Very much. Uh, and so the only reason to kill him really is if you're going for killing three NPCs. Yeah, it looks like that NPT is just going straight to Lyurina here. Maybe prepping something. There is Royal Revenant also on the board here. A uh, row three. Maybe Royal just... Revenant is a good early square, although without a healing spell, uh, it's, it's a much harder fight. For sure. We'll but you also got to look at the well blocks he here. It. It's, it's column two, row three block. That's a pretty powerful block. Uh, from MPT if he does get that that Royal Revenant early on. Oh, he's going also for a Dragon Helper check here too, I'm assuming. I mean, okay. just a Helper check. That's interesting. I wonder... Do you think that Dragon Helper is worth checking when you already have the Alabaster Lord Sword? No. No? Because some of these weapons, like, I don't, I, I'm not really sure how well Alabaster Lord Sword scales into, like, the mid-game and stuff. Um, I know, obviously, it it decimates the uh, the early game for sure. Yeah, no, it's very strong early game. It does fall off later on, but uh, the the um, dragon scale blade is definitely better for late game, from what it seems. From what it's built for, anyways. Yeah, it looks like that uh, he might just be rushing Royal Revenant potentially, grabbing the Grace here right before uh, South Gate Grace. Not going for the academy key, going for straight for the EG skip here to the teleporter. Very and, nice. you know, if he feels like, you know, obviously he's given up a lot in the early game here. Uh, if he feels like he needs to catch up through the mid game and kind of like get an advantage there on the uh, the slower squares, he can do that by upgrading his weapon to plus four as early as possible. Mm -hmm. So could be a nice uh, sort of recovery line for Tom here. Definitely not bad. And now and Bushy the, oh, also man. Him. With all of these early rushable squares, the, the this early game is very dangerous, and it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see who comes out on top here. Because I feel like you know if if Bushy gets a you know four to one advantage in the early game, it's gonna be really hard to come back. But if Tom can get that to a three to two square difference yeah. then uh i think he's gonna have a much better chance but there's the third npc for bushy i i wonder why tom didn't get a third npc not he sure either but nice combo from Gostock bushy the third one very nice combo from bushy because he he had bach in Lyurnia because he didn't yeah. kill him in the cave very nice combo wait what was yeah. his what was his first npc i missed that uh alexander oh yeah hot friend 
Yeah. Wow. You don't even. Oh, he doesn't even see Alexander as an NPC. SMH. No, just a pot. A crock pot. He's more than just a pot. All right. It looks like what they. Is he? Just a crock? Yeah, just a crock. Rop, just a crock. So sad. So underappreciated. Why were you a parrot for a second, Dom? Because I said exactly what you said. Oh, okay, okay. That ah! <laughs> uh, but yeah, it looks like... Um, Burge. Yeah, he might be going for Revenant here. I really feel like he is going to go for Revenant. He's really nearby. He grabbed money to level up. I think this is a good mid-game play still. I, maybe he just said, you know what? Early game's not working out for me. Let's uh, start to build up a mid-game advantage. And then maybe we'll be able to take out things like three Crucible Knights. Uh, you know, if he's going for three Wet Blades, he can take out Red Wolf super easily. Royal Revenant could go easier now that he's got a plus four. Yeah, I'm not but, like, sure. What else do we see? We see uh, Crystallian bosses as well. Tree Spirits. Having an upgraded weapon would help on a lot of these, actually. Maybe he sees that and he's like, okay, I'm going to go for a majority victory just by having a stronger weapon earlier. I mean, right now, that Royal Revenant block just looks too good anyways. Um, yeah. Because that row three is very, very powerful right now for Bushy. Um, and honestly, Bushy right now, as far as like the way I know he plays, he's not even going to go for a row three. He's not even looking at it. He doesn't care. He's going to go grab Dectus here, it looks like, and then just get ready for late game. Um, take Raya's Hand of Volcano Manor might be something that he's currently uh, thinking about. Yeah, Bushy not historically a line rusher. In Royal fact, Revenant. you know, from what from what we've seen, it seems like Bushy tends to just kind of like pretend the lines don't exist. Yeah, and just sort of, you know, try to snowball advantages into uh, majority victories. Very nice dodges here from NPT. Almost has another stagger here. Just has to be careful for those infinite combos. Does get the poison attack, which is really, really good for him. Nice stagger. Man. There we go. Tom's fights are so clean. Nice block. Nice block. And I'm assuming Bushy was expecting a whole it. lot. Yeah. Yeah. So we got that row three and column two block. Very, very nice for uh, for Tom here as the, the threats were starting to build on the board. That definitely eases some tension for him, for sure. This is very interesting. He's low, um, Bushy is grabbing the Act Talisman, which is really good for the Alabaster's Lord Sword here because we do Great use energy, a lot yeah. of you know, Charge R2s, but also you have eight Talisman on that uh, inner uh, square, column two, row four here. Um, so that just like plays into it. So grabbing these Talismans, it's kind of the same thing as like having a square of 30 intelligence when you have an intelligence weapon. You know, It's worth it, not just because it uh, amplifies your weapon, but also it uh, works towards a square on top of that. Right, yeah. Really, really nice. So, seeing now, like, it seems like most of these early squares have been, you know, snagged. So now we're probably going to enter, like, a bit of a setup phase here, I would imagine. What What do you think you're going for next in this situation? Raya. I, like I said, if I were Bushy, I'd go for Raya. If I were NPT in this case, um, Wet Blades. Wet Blades seems really good. You block that diagonal, you get column 5 on top of that. So in case Bushy is going for Raya in this case, which is a little bit of a, a bit of a longer like mid game type square, you can block that right away. Wet Blades just seems very comfortable. You already are in Liurnia. You already have access to Stormville. You already killed Margit, right? Um, that it seems like a very quick square for him to grab, and that also gets a lot of control uh, on the board for himself and progresses row one in that case as well. Yeah, absolutely. That's, Absolutely. Uh, that's that's what I would do in that case. But it looks like Bushy here going for Margit, by the way. Maybe he's going for Wet Blades. Yeah, he already did pick up the uh, the Wet Blade at, at Gatefront. Yeah. So this is not a bad option for him. Could also set himself up nicely for Colossal Weapon on... Remembrance bosses. Yeah, I don't think be very nice. Either of them have gone to the round table yet, so we don't even know what the weapon options are for Colossal. Man, I'm just so surprised that Tom didn't finish up that three friendly NPCs square. Yeah, here's because... the thing with like like Tom is the, the weird playstyle is that he sometimes assumes nobody else is really going for it, so he just like leaves it. 
You know, he kind of abandons right. it and is like, oh, they're not going to go for it anyways. I'll just kind of – it's a bit of a prepper style uh, way of going about it, but he's not necessarily doing it to prep. He's just – I don't I don't know how to explain it. It's not really a prep uh, move. It's more or less like a um, – it's a bit more mind gamey, I would say, uh, the way he does it anyways. Yeah, I mean, the good news for Tom, at least, is that he chose to do that on a square that is very low time commitment. So, like, you know, he killed two two friendly NPCs, left the third one on the table, and, um, you know, he really didn't lose too much time doing that, except for the death on Vare, of course. Yeah. But it's not like he spent, you know, 10 minutes killing seven Limgrave bosses and then didn't kill the last one. Uh, right, you know, right. Before yep. it was too late. Yep. And we see Tom here actually possibly going for... Okay, so he's definitely grabbing the grace here. Is he going to go for Redmain Castle? Because he could do go for a duo here and then also get the uh, Flame Wet, wet Blade. And I think that's actually what he's doing. He's going for a Crucible Knight yeah. duo um, and a also idea. Wet Blade. And I'm just, you know, seeing in chat now that apparently Tom never actually got the kill on Vare. So that's my mistake. Uh, mm. But yeah, so that makes sense then. You know, with only one NPC killed and he didn't get the... He didn't, you know feel like it was safe for him to get the kill on Vare. I think I think that makes more sense to me for sure. That's super fair. That is super fair. You know, he decides like I'm not going to go on tilt on on Vare for, you know, 5 more minutes. I'm just going to say screw the square and I'm just going to make progress on something else instead. I remember getting here the first time in the game and I was extremely confused about Redman Castle. And you know what was even more irritating is like you clear this whole area and you hear about Radon, and you're like, okay, cool, I clear this whole area, Where, where's my boss? And then Jaren's like, ah, dude, come back. He's, he's, he's not here yet. Yeah, come back, he's not ready, you know? He's still prepping. He's still in the makeup chair, you know? He's like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, he's dude, gotta, what? He's gotta go through hair and makeup before he's ready for this. You just, you go somewhere else. I spent like 40 minutes getting through this damn place, and you're telling mm -hmm. me I should just come back? Like, this is stupid. And like, getting through the, the, the duo fight. I remember, yeah, when the game first released, dude, there were so many summoning signs outside the Crucible uh, Misbegotten Duo door. Uh, people would be like, hey, if you need help, you know, just summon I mean, someone. At this point, it's, I, think, I think for a beginner, that fight is harder than Radon himself. It is so hard. Yeah. It is, it is a really, really tough fight. This is, this is a pretty, like, ballsy move from NPT because, like, this area is pretty dangerous and everything does you know everything has Kaled scaling on it so like yeah it's a it's a pretty bold move it's a little annoying uh but, bushy you know, here it sets him up really nicely yeah bushy catacombs um, catacombs i think he's he's eyeballing catacombs here weeping is a really great place to be in right now because i'm looking at the 10 physic flask tiers uh you also have sacred flask plus seven as well we have a few um sacred tiers here in weeping mm-hmm yeah. And it looks like, yeah, so NPT going for that uh, red wet blade. Red hot wet blade. Sorry, I missed the hot part. You got you cannot forget about that because if you forget that it's hot and then you go to pick it up, you will get burned, Dom. Okay? I don't know why, but sometimes the word hot makes it reminds me of that uh, icy hot sleeve with Shaq O'Neal in the advertisements, you know? It's like the... Yeah, I put that. My thoughts exactly. Absolutely. Hot to inflame the muscle and then cold to relax it away. Or something like that. I don't know. Dude, I love that, that commercial. That's, it's that's such a classic. A, I love that one. It's, a, it's an absolute. It's a classic. Absolute classic. Now, I love that they put an Icy Hot reference in Elden Ring with the with the red hot wet blade and then also the blue <laughs> crystal knife. I, I, I love it. Yeah. Is, it's a, it's a, it, I mean, you can tell where the inspiration came from. Absolutely. And, uh... Lazy Miyazaki. I wonder if, if MPT is rushing wet blades now completely, because this is going to be his last one, right? Did he get the, uh, the gatekeep wet knife? I don't know if he has yet. He may be saving that for last. I didn't catch if he actually already picked it up. Yeah, this might be his second one. Does he even have the stone sword keys is the other question. I think you only need... Two? This one is a is I, th I believe this one's a single stone sword key to unlock. Ooh, Rose's axe. That's a nice pickup. Oh, not terrible. Nice. Not, not not better than alabaster though. Oh, he's going for crucible. He's not going for wet blade. That's really that's so interesting. I'm so confused about this because that's what I'm saying. I, like wet blade just feels like a faster 
play. White Blade would be so good for him here. Maybe he's just prepping that and goes back. That could be a move too. Get this grace and then go. Nope. He's going. <laughs> Oh, maybe he didn't pick up the stone sword key, so now he's going back to Stormhill Shack to pick up the stone sword key and then go ah, back. That is that makes exactly sense. what's happening. All right. Oh, uh, this is a little AI manipulation on that jumping off the horse for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was just manipulating AI, probably. Okay, there we go. That makes more yeah. sense. Yeah. Dude, I swear. Sometimes I feel like I've figured out the players, and then they pull something. I'm like, I don't, I don't know what's going on anymore. Like, don't ask me. I'm lost. Look, if there's anything I know about Bingus, it's that I know nothing about Bingus. Yeah. Mom, please pick me up. I'm scared. I, I'm, um, yep. Yeah. Yep. All right, here he goes. Goes for that uh, Stormvale Wet Knife, or Iron Wet Blade, I should say, is That's the right. actual term. Um, And then, yeah, this is, I think, uh, Bushy's first catacomb. Is this the, this is the double watchdogs one. Why is he going for this one? Is there... Oh, is he grabbing? Oh, he's grabbing the glove warts. That's why. Oh, to get the very nice. Uh, the upgraded spear dash summon. The plus four, yeah. Right. He's trying right, to block right. row one. I think he sees that row one might be a little bit of a problem here. Yep, I think that is a very, very smart play on Bushy's part here because, uh, you know, if he doesn't block, I think I could see that that row one becoming a threat very quickly. The other thing that's interesting though is that he might think he can, he can progress column four, um. But then also, NPT does already have Crucible and Misbegotten Duo Grace set aside for himself to where he can go for a block as well. Yeah, Tom has done all of the running required to set up the uh, the three Crucible Knights because he has the one in Stormvale Castle. He has the one on um, Stormhill itself in the Everjail. And then he has the Crucible Knight Misbegotten Duo as well. So all of the running for that is prepared. All he has to do is actually just execute the kills. But instead, we see him going towards Celia. Let's see. Uh, Celia maybe... Town Skip, maybe. Yeah. I wonder if he's trying to use some of Bushy's own medicine against him a little bit. He's counter prepping. Oh, he's prepping the prepper. I see. That's right. That's right. Very nice. Jesus. He's making himself immune to the mind games. That's probably the cleanest Celia Skip I've seen in Bingo. Yeah. That was That's, insane. My God. He, he last week we had a lubed up Celia skip branch. This week it is it, it, that they put some grip tape on that this week. Yeah, what do you think? <laughs> do uh, uh, NPT put some nice little uh, hooves on torrent? A little bit of an upgrade, you know, like pimp yeah, my yeah, torrent. Yeah. He's got he's got the instead of, instead of you know regular horseshoes, he's got the horseshoe cleats. Mm, yeah, I can yeah. Totally see that for maximum grip strength. I do wonder if that's actually like a thing. You could probably do that on horses. Put like cleats on them to like make them, <laughs> make them. You sure could, absolutely. Grip, grip, uh, grip the ground a little bit easier. Do you think they'd like talk about it like that we would with like wearing cleats for soccer? They'd be like, dude, I'm like really fast right now. Like no, you're always fast. I don't know. Check this out. <laughs> it just starts just running. Hey. Just the horse. Are you asking me if I think the horses talk to each other about their cleats? Dude, uh, what do you think the uh, animals do? Of course. Animals talk all the time. Do you talk to animals? They don't listen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good to know. Good to know. Good to know. Yeah. Hmm. Do you have any any animals like near you at the moment that you no. might talk to? No. Not right now. People have told me I'm a bit of an animal. Yeah. Many times. Wait, Absolutely. A specific animal or just any animal? Okay, like a little bit of a, yeah, a little bit of a, people say I'm a little bit of a cat boy. It's, mm. I've been known to be called that before. It's all vicious rumors, though. There's no, like, actual um, <laughs> substantiating evidence to support that, I would say. Fair, fair. Yeah. Okay, MPT going for a storm wall Our here. players are doing such a great job this week. Look at this. I guess he's Getting, grabbing he's that. He's grabbing that for Crucible Knights. He's grabbing that for Elmer, uh, I believe. Okay. That would make sense, anyways. Also for Cru yeah, Crucible Knight, Misbegotten Warrior duo. Uh, obviously pairing Crucible Knight in that fight is really, really nice. 
and this is also really good for NPT if he goes for he's going for it. Yeah, I was about to say if he goes for Crucible Misbegotten Duo, this is going to be huge. He blocks Column Four. He blocks Road Two. Yeah. That's going to be really really nice, and he's progressing Crucible Knights as well on top of that. And I, I, it's yeah, nice fight. to see him go for the parries on the Crucible Knights because I, I honestly feel like that's just the safest play. I've seen a lot of people trying to fight them straight up, and just being able to parry them, I think, is just going to make a huge difference. Yeah, this is going to be... This is interesting, because it's also like... Um, they both have gotten a duo fight already, which is the Demi-Human Chiefs. This would be NPT's second duo fight. It could go for... Very true, yeah. Um, you know, a, a future Crystallian trio, potentially. Yeah, absolutely. And then that would... Uh get progress towards the crystallian bosses as well that'd be a, I, I feel like that's a bushy style play yeah that's that's what i was talking about looking for more synergies not just like you know bum rushing squares go for the the really really nice synergies play by plays into different squares that work off of each other right oh not to mention tom is gonna get a colossal weapon from this yeah that is actually very true that's a really nice synergy Oh, he does miss the parry. He's got to be careful. That, that was a bold parry, but I respect that he went for it. Now let's see him just play calm, cool, collected. There we go. Nice. Very, very nice parry. We got Bushy making his way through Lyernia. Meanwhile, looks like he's he's finally making his way over to Iggy. Going to be probably upgrading that Alabaster Lord Sword. So at this point, I mean... It's looking like maybe Tom had the right idea by doing this earlier on. He knew that Bushy was going to have to do it eventually. So now that he, since he's already done it, now he's making progress while Bushy is not making progress. Yep. So, you know, it may have looked bad like early on, but we'll have to see how it plays out. Because right now, he's setting himself really nicely here. That was a little scary there. I'm surprised that the, <laughs> neither of the players are are doing like if you are low damage here, you you could technically do the Crucible Knight Gravity Kill, but it's a right. little tricky to pull off. We saw that for the first time last season, but I don't know if I've actually seen it done in a live bingo match. Yeah, I don't I don't think so either. It is it is a little a, bit tricky a bit to of pull a gamba. off. It is a, it is very much a gamba. Yeah, you have yeah. to make sure that you get the uh, the parkour right to even land on the on the wine cellar area and then make sure that the crucible knight actually behaves and you know follows you right so, so there's all that stuff and i believe he can destroy the barrels too at which point you're just kind of screwed yeah but overall very nice fight though from mpt for sure yeah you know he may be proving my statement about crucible knights wrong i i may have been on record saying that this was a trap square and took as long as moog takes and uh here we are I, I don't know look i stand by it okay sure sure i look just show me the stats on the times just show me the stats prove me wrong i'm i'm good okay <laughs> I'm, all right yeah he's he's sure he's sure i i can't say i blame him <laughs> You know what is interesting, by the way, I found this out the other day, is that you can actually strafe the tail attack. Oh! No. Oh my god! Well, what, I, Crucible Knights are a trap. I stand by it. Bushy here making his way through the catacomb. Doesn't have the plus four uh, spirit ash just yet, but I think once he clears this, he will he be able to do that. He does have the spirit ash plus four. Never mind, I lied. You know, thank you for giving me the opportunity to uh, redeem myself in terms of my bingo observation skills. Thank you. You're welcome. I mean, yes. That makes me that makes me feel a lot better. That's very gracious of you, Dom. Thank you. I appreciate it. You know, I like we sometimes get comments of like, yo, know, how the commentators miss that? How do commentators miss this? I don't think you guys understand. Like, it's sometimes really, really hard to watch two players do something and then also keep track of the board and everything. It's a little bit trickier. I think some people realize you guys just get to sit back, dip your fingers in some nice Cheeto bags, have a good time, and you know, drink your lemonade. You know, it's a little tricky sometimes to keep track of everything. So if we do make some mistakes, it happens. You know, it happens. Very, very right. You are, Dom. Uh, you know, I wish I could be dipping my fingers in some Cheeto bags right now. Uh, but you know, I I gotta stay clean. This uh, this sharp demeanor here doesn't doesn't happen on its own. 
You know what I mean? Yeah, it's it, it's it's a it's a job, man. It's a job. No, no Cheeto dippage for us. What can I say? It's a it's a tough job. And that is going to be Bushy's first catacomb, by the way. And MPT pivoting off of the duo fight. I I do respect. I mean, it's it's tough because as much as we say that committing is key, it can be it can be tough because every single death not only loses time but it also plays on your mental. And I yeah. think that preserving mental is a huge aspect of winning bingo. Just just making sure that when you make mistakes, when things go wrong, you're able to to take it in stride and 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 uh, adapt basically. Yeah. No, I, I definitely agree. Definitely agree. Looks like mm -hmm. NPT might be going for weeping here. Yeah, it could be. He's positioning for it anyways. This the, Look at the bottom right corner of this board and how it's just completely untouched. Yeah, I mean, it's all late game-ish, except for yeah. Raya. I, I'm surprised that no, one's have de no one has Dectus yet. No one has Altus access. We're almost 40 minutes into the game. I'm a little surprised by that, actually. This yeah. game is is grinding to a halt in terms of pro progress here. Yeah, I think we're gonna hit we're gonna hit uh, about fifty minutes in, and then it's just gonna be both of them prepping rather than rushing mm -hmm. things here. Because at some point they're gonna run out of damage. At some point they're gonna run out of squares to do, um, and it's gonna turn into okay. I have to get to Altus now. I have to go do Elmer. I have to you know go do uh, Raya's Hand of Volcano Manor stuff like that. Most of the stuff Bushy. is pre Altus though too. So. It is, yeah. It's interesting how it's like a combination of late game, but not like super late game. Yeah. Nice, good, good kill from Bushy here. I'm noticing he did pick up the Intelligence Knot Crystal tier, which uh, does progress him towards acquiring 10 Physic Flask tiers and also gives him the stats to wield the Alabaster Lord Sword. So yes, very sir. nice synergy there. Yes, sir. Very, very nice. Looks like um, Tom is going to be progressing towards going to Altus at this point. As he makes his way towards, unless no, he's, this yeah, is he, Fort Height, right? This, this is Fort Height. This is Fort Height. Yep. This is Fort Height. I definitely understand my geometry here. Mm, geography. That's yes. the one. Mm -hmm. They're basically this. Geometry is like geography, but for wait, geography is like geometry, but for the Earth. You know what I mean? Sure. Because like geometry is like like shapes and geography is like the globe and what is geography except for shapes on the globe that's a very uh long distance type of uh analogy but okay how is this it's okay how, the how? YouTube commenters will back me up. Okay, yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is that the second half of the deck? This by the way, for MPT, he did do Cilia Townscape. I think this is the second half. So he has Altus access now. So that's good. Yeah, that is very good for him. It looks like we got Bushy going in for the Cemetery Shade here. This would be his second Catacomb as well. So this is definitely mm -hmm. progressing Road Two, which would I, force. These... You know, I have to go back. Me out so much. Just do the just backstab stuff. For I, people always say that, and then I go to do it, and he turn and he pulls out the blender move, and I die. Oh my wait. god, that's a lot of damage! Wow. Okay. Yeah. There you All go. right. Well, I'm bad. I think that's that's the lesson here is that I'm just I'm just bad. Road two looking good. Column one looking good. So this is like Bushy just creating pressure at, like after each square. Every square that he acquires, it's a little bit more pressure for MPT to deal with. It is, yeah. Row two I... having three squares, column one having two squares, column four having two squares. This is looking pretty tough. Bushy going to the first step. I wonder if he's going to be taking that trap chest to Kaled and then making his way over to uh, Crucible Knight, Misbegotten Warrior duo. Looks like MPT is making his way over to the Dectus Elevator, actually, possibly going for Raya's hand, but I don't think he did the quest line, so he's going there without Raya. And if he does go to Altus, he, does, he can't do uh, Crucible Knight. I think he's risking... Or giving up Crucible Knight Duo for Sacred Flask charges instead. He's going for the plus seven. And, you know, that would set him up nicely for late game squares because he could have a ton of healing 
Uh, he'd have the plus seven. He'd also get um, a bunch of extra flasks, uh, flask charges as well. Yeah. So in terms of survivability, I think this sets him up really nicely. It's I just agree. a matter of like, you know, y you have to wonder if at this point it's a little, you know, too little, too late. Hopefully he's able to convert that advantage into uh, some actual squares here in the late game. Yeah, I think he's definitely forcing Sacred Flask pl uh, plus seven in this case. It's it's a really good block to go for, I think. I, I think optimally he'd go for the Crucible Knight Misbegotten Warrior duo for the block just because he invested so much time into that. But if he doesn't feel like he can consistently get that, then I think this is the next best play for sure. Well, I think it's like one of those things that we we're talking about, uh, you know, the last couple of weeks where it's <gasps> if you want to go for a block, you don't go for the uh, the next best thing block. You go for mm -hmm. the bit of a long game kind of block where it takes yeah, a little bit more a really to get to it, you know. Because then, you know, you, you reduce the odds that you're going to get sniped. Right. Oh, and Bushy but... possibly doing Salia Town Skip here as well. Uh, maybe going to Altus. And yeah, MPT we'll going for Duo. Branch is also gripped up here. Okay, uh, MPT actually pivoting off and going for duo instead. I think he didn't want to give up that fight just in case he does he lose Sacred Flask. He did equip the uh, Radagon Sword Seal, so now he has more survivability. So it may just be that, you know, he wanted Ooh. to get a bit stronger first. Bushy not making the skip the first try here, trying again. Oh, he's getting a little bit of torrent memes. He's got the He's got the greased up branch. All right. Yep, there it is. Oh my, oh, oh no. This is why we saw him practicing right before the game just to make sure that he gets this, but it's still having a little bit of a hard time trying to get this skip going. I hate this skip with a passion. It's I'm so telling you, in Bingus, I'm just going for the torch. I think he's dead. <gasps> Whoa, that's actually a pretty big time loss. Uh, what you guys think of Mariko? So it's not too bad, but it is annoying. Yeah. It's definitely annoying. And we're back to Perry City here on the Crucible Night. I think this is still plus zero, by the way. Is it plus, Maybe it's plus four, actually. But even it for plus, plus four, four, this doesn't seem like a lot for plus four. Yeah, make it, well, he doesn't have the stats, so could just be that he's missing out on that magic damage. I thought I saw him also using the Intelligence Knot tier, though, but maybe not. Mm, no, he doesn't have it active. Well, let's, let's see. He's got a nice, comfortable loop going here, it seems like. Yeah. Until Crucible Knight just decides to turtle, and then... Okay, okay, recovered. But he only does, he only has two flask charges left. Yeah, this is definitely looking a little tough, for sure. He only has one left. If he drinks it, he has zero left. Because that's how yep. math works. Oh, hold on, wait. One. Yep, the math does check out there. The math, uh -oh. yep. As a geometry specialist, I can confirm that the math does absolutely check out. Oh my, no. Okay, yeah, he's got to make sure he gets all these parries. Well, I would like to reiterate how much Crucible Knights are a trap. I hate rolling through that. I'd rather jump mm -hmm. every single time. That rolling through just makes me so nervous. Good parry. Yeah, you just can't get greedy. You just can't get greedy. Somebody's you have to make sure that you're parry. positioned correctly. Because sometimes you like parry for something and... Ooh! Oh. Okay, that was a little terrifying. I'm not going to lie. But yeah, I, you're absolutely right. Sometimes you do parry like at the right time, but because you're off center, the, the weapon hits you at like a slightly diff different timing and then yeah. that's the difference. Yep. Yeah. There's the roll. This guy has to play smart. Does get that. Very nice. Dom, I'm seeing allegations that uh, the jump may not be as reliable as you're insinuating it may be. I don't care. It looks cool. That's fair, actually. That's a great point. I Yep. Hadn't considered that. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I, uh, it's like it's like I'm like I, I remember I always said I'm an old man. Like at this point, I've done it so much where I don't care. Yeah, we we don't look. We don't change at this point. Once yeah. once we get to this, age, um, we're we're done. We're washed. That's why we're on commentary. <laughs> I don't think I'm that washed. <laughs> oh, oh God. No, we're you're washed. It's very nice fight. 
Very, yep, I was just thinking the same thing. Very nice fight here from oh. MPT. He's still alive, though. Let's see him. Let's see him maintain composure. Uh oh, now, yeah, oh, Crucible that pulling out yeah, all the moves there. now. Oh, there's the dart. Yep, that was a great play. Grace under pressure here and alleviating some of that pressure from Bushy with that square. Very nice fight. I guess that's Very also really, nice fight. like it's a good square for MPT to grab here, like great blocks for row two and column four. But I think for Bushy also, not a single time loss because he never went for it. So this is also really that's good true. for Bushy in that case where this has been like four or five minutes of MPT's time that Bushy was able to utilize going for other squares instead. We, we know that Bushy is not much of a line rusher. So even if this is a good block, this is just playing even more into Bushy's favor, you know? Bushy may very well be the king of hedging his bets. You know, like he he sets himself up for something and then tells the opponent, you got to go for this. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Pretty much, which can be scary. I, I do wonder if people will catch on at some point and realize like there's no, there's no chance he'll finish this line. That's the thing, like, I started doing that with some of the players in the practice matches where I would just beeline my line and see if they would react to it at all. And, like, it started becoming one of those things where it's like, okay, if you're not blocking my line, I'll do my line. And then the other players, player would do the same thing. And they just have, like, two straight lines across <laughs> the board, and that's individual it. Individual games going on, just yeah. completely separate bingo matches. <laughs> I was like, okay, that's, that's interesting. Dom, I'm sorry I called you washed. I, that was... No, you're fine. It's all good. It's okay. Look. I think you're I think you're a great gamer, Dom, okay? Sticks and stones, Josh! Sticks and stones. I look, I may have been projecting a little bit. <laughs> nah, that's all good. No, it's all good. We're, we're both still in our in our prime. That's good, because I I mean honestly I would I would I, I was just trying to make you feel better. No, oh, appreciate it, appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. You're this, welcome. This, the same way you tried to make me feel better about my somewhat receding hairline. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, look, it's it's not receding. It is becoming distinguished. Ah, yes, the distinguished hairline. My Absolutely. favorite. Absolutely. Yes. Missing Absolutely. the sacred tear here, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've seen a lot of people get memed by these sacred tears. It's getting a little. It's getting a little interesting. I wonder how many tiers they actually have because they haven't really upgraded their flasks too much. Bushy is still on plus two, but I'm pretty sure he's got more than two. Yeah, just sitting in the back pocket, especially as he's coming up here on the Bellum Church. He's gonna be grabbing another one. Tom is making his way over towards the Elmer, I think. Elmer, yeah. Which is Blocking a good play. That column one. I think that's a great call. If he's going to block on column one, I think this is the way to do it. Well, yeah, because it's also blocking the diagonal on top of that, which is huge. That is huge, actually. That is a sneaky diagonal. Yep. That's a diagonal I think you actually could go for. Oh, 100%. It's, it's time consuming, but it's realistically possible. And it's one of those where, like, in all likelihood, your opponent wouldn't predict that you're going for it. It's also one thing I'm a little surprised by is that actually Bushy didn't see that because it would progress both diagonal and column one for him. Um, but also, like, just traveling to Altus uh, progresses Sacred Flasks plus tw uh, seven as well. Yeah, I wonder if that's where he's thinking about going right now. Maybe he doesn't recognize that uh, Tom could be ahead. I'm wondering, does he actually have any information that could tell him that Tom is ahead of him here? Not really. No. Yeah. I mean, he does have Royal Revenant, so you know he's got the EG Grace, right? Um, but he just killed Crucible Misbegotten Warrior Duo without doing, like, the Colossal Armament only. So either he killed Radon and then did the fight, or he just did the fight and never went to Altus. That tells right. Bushy, okay, either he doesn't have Altus access, and that's why he just did uh, Warrior Misbegotten Duo, or um, he has Altus access but has never gone. Did we see what weapon he got off of? Uh, Crucible Knight Misbegotten Duo. I missed it. I'm curious if he if he finds that to be useful enough. Okay, it seems he got the Troll Knight Sword, which is actually pretty a pretty good it's sword, especially. Um, well, I was gonna say especially with the uh, stat line that he has, but yeah, I think. No, I agree. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the stat requirements are on Troll Knight. It's a lot of strength, some intelligence, yeah. but a lot of strength. For sure. 
And Bushy now back at champ, uh, champion, uh, Church of champion. LA. The champion gun deer, as, champion. They, as they call him sometimes. Champion. Yeah. What is he? Grabbing cracked pots cracked here. Cracked pots and crafting. So... Maybe tier consumables only. Okay. That makes sense. Is he just Could alternatively be picking up sleep pots for the Godskin Apostle? Is he thinking about rushing row four here, actually? It it's is not very a bad rushable. play, actually. Yeah. And it's a, it's a bit of a... It actually is a bit of a prep line where yeah. you can sort of, you know, get seven different talismans, get nine different physic flask tiers, and then just just gun it. He already has Especially some tiers, if, too. If you kill Radon without, like, marking any square associated with that... You know, you don't do, uh, what do you call it? Like Colossal mm. for that? Then, you know, you're, Tom would have no idea that he's, he even killed Radon. Yeah, very interesting. Oh, that was a scary elevator on Tom's side. Oh, my God. <laughs> I remember last season, Parky getting absolutely memed by that guy where she quit out right in front of the elevator and the guy spawns right at the elevator. So every single time she quit out, the guy oh, would just stand no. there and push her into the elevator again. Oh, no. It was pretty funny. I'm not going to lie. That's um, a classic. Okay. Let's uh, let's see Tom setting up the AI Ooh, loop here. Okay. Oh, my. Okay. He must nice know dodge. that window. Oh, oh, no. He got grabbed. <gasps> The classic from software grab a hitbox strikes again. We got we got some some dancer of the boreal valley tier grab hitboxes there. So either I Bushy is curse. going for wasn't me. Either either Bushy goes for Godskin Apostle or he's grabbing the lightning pot recipe here. I think he's going for Godskin actually. Could be could be doing a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. You yeah. know that he likes to do things at the same time, so could be grabbing the lightning on the way. Uh, no, he didn't grab uh, the recipe. He's no. just going straight Recipe's, for Godskin. The recipe off of that merchant there. I don't remember where the recipe is off the top of my head. Right, the merchant right there on the bridge. Okay, okay, okay. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Tom gotcha. dying again to Elmer. Elmer just not having it. Like you were saying, the... Crucible Knights and the Bell Bearing Hunter moveset, they are just extremely punishing. If you mess up even a little bit, they will uh they will eat your cereal. They will. Yep. Talk about the last Jedi, Alamer just not having it, throwing a sword across the room. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. He certainly does. But you know, the thing with these uh Bell Bearing Hunters, a lot of time. Once you get into position, once you get into a groove, that punish is so scary. Yeah, that is very... I feel like that's kind of oh, such a tight strafe, too. All right, there's the AoE. He's going to be behind him, so now he gets the shield oh, slam. What the hell? Whoa. That was he a risky R1. I would have rather he have gone be... for the uh, for the uh, the shield slam cycle because now he, he kind of took him out of the shield slam cycle. Yeah. All right, that's the thing with, like, speedrunners. I, I feel like speedrunners take more risks. Yeah. It's it's a very like high high risk high reward play style, where sometimes it pays off and sometimes you get punished. Nice little sleep here by Bushy. Does miss the repose though. Has another sleep pod in his pocket though. Throws them little little good old pocket sand. Get some charged R twos off. You can't sleep on the pocket sand. It 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 works. You know. Uh, Tom just jumped the grab from Elmer. Well, that's a thing. I did not. Uh, Could have fooled me. Wait, so he jumps that, I, but he doesn't jump the Crucible Knight? That's silly. Ordovis' great sword here. That's a pretty cool weapon. Oh, yeah, and then yeah, God's yeah. going to apostle here for Bushy. Could we see some power stance action, perhaps? Some jump L1 power stance action? I Look, I have long been a proponent of power stancing in this game, and and nobody takes me seriously. It sucks. And frankly, frankly, I'm... That hurts. That hurts, Dom. It is straight dog, my guy. That's <laughs> it's okay. It's it, I can take it. I don't feel like like the I think like the only power stancing that I think is good is the like hammer. The hammer power stancing is actually solid. Uh, like great hammers are really good. Great axes are really good, and I think great swords are also solid. I think 
Oh, also, curved greatswords are fantastic mm. when it comes to power stancing. You, I mean, you gotta you gotta embrace the jump L1 meta. Yeah. You cannot sleep on the jump L1. Was she going for the putrid avatar here? Going for a physic flask tears, but also trying to get, yeah. I, I'm assuming, as much cash money as possible with this one dropping 89,000 smackaroonies. Lots of smackaroonies. Oh. Taking a lot of damage, though. It's got to be careful about that Taking a lot of damage. Yeah, the, those smackaroonies they give and they do take away because the, the call of the smackaroonies can sometimes be very appealing. But, uh, you know, if you if you get tagged by the rot one too many times, that will uh, reduce your HP to zero and you will be facing that you died screen. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Something a lot of players underestimate. But it looks like we see Bushy giving the respect that it deserves. And it looks like that Tom's going to go for that Colossal Armaments only on row this five. Is, this is a strong play from Tom here. Uh, starts to get him closer to opening up Landell if he wants to kill that Morgoth. Yeah. Because something we talked about last week a few times was how players seem to be underestimating the value of Landell and how if uh, they gave a little bit more respect to Landell, some some matches could have turned out a little bit differently. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Bushy almost having this boss locked down. Godric fight here for NPT with the Troll Knight's sword. Has Troll's Roar on it, by the way, which is not bad at all. I remember the cheese from Millennia with the Troll's Roar is actually pretty hilarious. You pretty much knock it's around so her butt. I think this is my favorite Colossal Sword. Really? Yeah, I, I like it. You know, it's it's no grafted blade greatsword, but it is... It's got it's got some style of its own. Plus that it's L2 got range. is just... It's, it's real nice. It's got nice Love range. Love me a good Troll's Roar. Yeah. It, it kind of also... It's like a... It's like a souped up Zweihander. It's like a Zweihander had Troll's Roar and also was a... Um, uh, somber weapon and also had magic damage associated with it and also had different stat requirements but other than that it is pretty much the exact same thing there we go by the way 30 faith there for bushy claims 30 faith and also going nice to be working bushy. towards those physic flasks even more very nice very nice currently nine to five i remember when i used to have a nine to five <laughs> amen we see bushy just applying threats where they could be applied, forcing a reaction, and then just bailing. He's he's kind of just like, hey, go over here now. And then yeah. his opponents has and then his opponent has to go over there. And then he's like, all right, have fun with that. I'm gonna go do something else. I mean, I'm gonna do something fun, which is killing trees. Hey, only you can prevent forest fires, okay? Killing trees, not very based, I would say. I mean, I guess, you know, you can't have forest fires without trees. Right you are, Dom. <laughs> right you are. That is absolutely So technically, tree. if you get rid of the trees, tree. no forest that's fires. A, that's so. absolutely tree. <laughs> a little bit of a, a slip of the tongue there. Uh... And here we have a very clean Godric the Grafted fight. From nuclear pasta Tom. The thing that's gonna be interesting is like how many tiers is Bushy away? Because I'm telling you, that row four is very quick. It is, it is. And you know, if you don't see the threat, you don't respect the threat, he may be able to to grab that row before Tom can actually react to it. There we go. Colossal four NPT now. Bushy should see that and be like, okay, that's fine. I wasn't even going for that yet again. Yeah. You know, these are all these all these different square blocks that NPT is going for are never ever contested by Bushy anyways. He, he's losing time. It might be that he's getting squares, yes, but he's still four squares behind and no pressure on the board. Like Bushy is free roaming right now. He has majority unlocked. He's blocked every single bingo for NPT. Like NPT is just uh, currently in in catch up game. Yeah, that said, Tom does have more of the map unlocked, if I recall correctly, which means that he may have an advantage on some of these other squares. Looks like maybe both of the players are going for Raya right now. Could we have a little Raya race, perhaps? Yeah, I'm, I'm pulling up the map. Give me a hot second here. We do have a yeah, little I'm bit of Yeah, I'm not sure a... how close they are at the moment. If only there was a, a little oh, bit of my... map time. Look at that side by side. NPT right next to Bushy. Look at them. Who is going to be on the tighter line? 
They're really close. They are really close. It may come down to how quickly they can have that conversation with uh, the, 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 the ball man himself. Oh, I thought you meant the lovely Lady Raya, but yeah, that works too. Uh, her as well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who needs Absolutely. to talk to women when you got men with balls? So true. Right you are. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, here we go. Oh, an NPT dies! <gasps> he gets smacked up by Boggart. Sometimes... Oh. The balls, they are more than one can handle. Yo, Jesus be ballin'? That's, uh... That is tough. It is. He cannot underestimate the balls. And now you're having a hard time trying to... Why don't they just... Why don't they just, uh... Go back? This fight's kind of so tricky. I know that they kill him because... The problem with this is... If you don't talk to Raya first, you can't buy the necklace. So that's why you kill him mm -hmm. when you're coming from this way... Because you don't want to go back and forth constantly. But it's so risky. And as you can tell right now, Amputee is losing a lot of time. A lot of time even. Because Bogart is just back hopping and dodging every attack. Bushy now is an Altus. Yeah. In a, in a situation like this, like the way I see it, you really want to eliminate as much RNG as you can. And I think fighting him is just inviting RNG into your life. And RNG, it is like a vampire. It can't enter your life unless you invite it. It's something that they say a lot in, mm. in poker. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Are you a your poker enjoyer? I've never played, actually. Oh, okay. And if we take a look at that board, we see that Raya is being claimed by Bushy. Yep, there we go. There is that. Which unfortunately uh... means another bit of time sink for Tom. Looks like he's pointing to Stormhell Shack now, going maybe for Crucible Knights. And yeah, they're currently 11 to 6 for Bushy. Bushy just needs two squares, and he can go for whatever he wants. He can go for Sacred Flask. He can go for Talisman. He can go for, I don't know, Crystallian Bosses, Tree Spirits. It doesn't really matter. Like, for he just needs two. He already has a lot of Talismans. He might as well just go for that. And the Sacred Flask, which I think he's going for right now. He's going for that Weeping Church here, and the one down below. And then uh, he's good to go, you know? Uh, speaking of map time, I could use this again real quick. Uh, with Bushy being here, Sacred Tear here, Sacred Tear here, Sacred mm -hmm. Tear up here. You got three in Weeping. Very, very nice. Uh, and then depending on if he goes to Altus, you know, he's got some uh, got some to go for as well. Which uh, I can't yeah. think of right now. I think uh, there's one over here, uh, to my understanding. Uh, that seems to be it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, that was cool. All right, good part. Uh. That was some excellent map time. I really enjoyed that. That really, uh... Pulled everything together. Did, did a lot of good for me. No problem. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, I, I mean, we're in a situation now where I think Bushy is at an advantage on both Sacred Flasks and, uh, Talismans as well, which means if he wanted to, he could probably just beeline both of those and pull out pull out the dub uh we're, we're at a point in the in the game where i think mind games play a huge part and you know at this point technically bushy could run the risk of getting sniped over and over again leading to a comeback from tom yeah but because bushy has a tendency to prep squares along the way as much as he can uh that makes him a lot less susceptible to that sort of vulnerability for sure and and Bushy gonna go ahead, grab. Where is he going now? He already had this. Where's he going? Oh, he's going towards the uh, the the other church that I pointed out. The the rat oh, church, right, the right, frenzy right. church. Yes, the rat jam church. Yes. Yeah. Nice little double hop here. Has to make sure. Oh, he jumped a little okay. too soon. I think I think that he might have been able to to survive that there, but I think that was a smart play. Yeah. I would, I would have, I would have quit out too, for sure. The interesting thing here is that I saw Tom actually making his way towards picking up talismans, and because they are going for different squares, Tom, I think Tom is going to be able to snipe that. That's going to be good. I don't even know how many talismans uh, Bushy even has. He has at least three, to my understanding. 
if Tom is able to snipe that and then also snipe tree spirits and crystallian bosses, we are going to see a very, very interesting race. I think Tom has a, you know, for sure advantage on Crucible Knights. Yeah. And I'm sure Bushy, you know, knowing that is probably going to avoid going for Crucible Knights and go for something like Tree Spirits instead. Now, on the other hand, he could think that Tom thinks that he's going to avoid going for Crucible Knights because Tom has the advantage. And then there could be some back and forth little game game. I'm thinking, Gamey honestly, game. if I were Bushy, I would go for the Sacred Flasks here, which he just did. That's 12. He just needs one more. I'm going to go for Crystallian Bosses. I have a Grace right next to the duo fight uh, in Altus, right? Go for that one, and then just go for the one in Lyurnia, and it's, it's, that's my game, you know? But it looks like yeah. he's actually going to what seems to be... Is he grabbing Dectus? No, he already has Dectus. What, 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 what? Talismans? Sacrif uh, I mean, sacrificial it, twig here. Yeah. Who's grabbing talisman? If he truly wanted to be completely uncontested, he could just pick the two slowest squares and go for those, and he would probably get them. There you go for Morgoth. I, I actually yeah. think that's a good play. Is is just picking out the slowest squares. Maybe like Morgoth. I don't know about rune level 60. Rune level 60 might be too slow, but like, yeah, Morgoth, and then maybe like Mimic Tier. And then between those two, you just... You just pull out the dub. Yeah. But it does look like he's going for talismans. Which he is going to lose this race. NPT going for seaside ruins now. I would be stoked if we saw a Morgoth fight this game. I'll be very surprised. Uh, NPT going to round table for the first time, by the way. I, I think the reason why is because uh, Bushy ha doesn't, doesn't have a single remembrance. So. Yeah. So with that in mind, it does seem like Tom would have an advantage there as well. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm having a lot of advantages here in the late game, despite being so far behind on squares. But it may oh, just be a little interesting pickup. too little too late. Very interesting pickup. Okay. Great shield yeah. talisman. Yeah. I wonder if they have timed out the optimal eight talismans to go for. There is the talisman square, by the way. You should see on Bushy's face here yep. really quickly uh, that NPT did grab that. So Bushy is going to have to very quickly pivot here, which he, you see him opening the map right away. I'm going for Crystallians. He should definitely go for Crystallians in this case if he wants to lock in this game. Yeah, I think I agree with that. I don't know. Does the Alabaster Lord Sword do okay against Crystallians? I know that they yeah. are resistant to magic but you know as you said the stagger damage is pretty nice the uh, charge dart 2 stagger damage it's 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 a, it's a walk of the park pretty much in that case and that's okay. what mpt is going for here oh. now as well oh my god what a great call and from MPT. bushy is going for crucible knights very interesting he could be he it's oh. technically possible he is just saying screw it i'm going for morgot goes for godric and then goes for like radon i guess yeah something like that That'd be hilarious. Yeah. But also, like, really long. Because <laughs> if you're bushy in this situation, like I said, you know, he knows that Crucible Knight, he's at a disadvantage on Crucible Knights. Honestly, if anything, I wouldn't go for Godric in this case. I'd go for Radon first, and then just prep Mimic to your consumables only, because you already have intelligence, and just go for the one shot. Yeah, I, that's not a bad play at all. And then if you don't get Mimic to your consumables only, you already have Radon, go for Godric, and then go for Morgoth, you know? Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, I, I do think going for the slower squares is a better bet for Bushy. Yeah. 100%. 100%. Because he's in a position where he, he can't afford to be proactive. Whereas, like, Tom is... He has to be reactive for the rest of the game, basically, if he wants to if he wants to have any chance of winning this. Yeah. Oh, it looks like he's going for Tree Spirits, actually. Okay. Okay. That's good, too. I, this makes sense. So you can go for it's, this it's one. one. That's not quite as rushable as Crystallians. Yeah, yeah. Which means it's unlikely that Tom is going for it. So he can go for um, this one, the one in Stranded Graveyard, and the one in Altus, and then he should be good to go. He's got good damage anyways, so this should be a pretty easy fight on his end. Yeah, and it, it really goes to show that in, a, in Bushy's position where you are ahead of your opponent, the best skill that you can have is being unpredictable yeah 
And then when you're in Tom's position, the best skill that you can have is knowing your opponent and being able to predict what they might go for. Now, do you think that this game, as we mentioned, this is, you know, mind game versus speed, pretty much. Would you say that the mind game actually, like, pulled through, or was it also a little bit more on, uh, you know, Tom's uh, unfortunate mistakes where he lost a couple, like, squares due to, you know, Bogart, uh, Duo dying there, you know, um, having, you know, having those instances uh, that kind of just ruined the match for him. I think it's a little bit I mean on both, I would say. Ultimately, I think this game comes down to the early game squares. The the four early game squares that Bushy were, was able to to yeah, snag right away. That's true. I think I think that in the, in this situation may have been the deciding factor here. Yeah. That early game pressure definitely builds up. There's a nice kill on the first tree spirit from Bushy. He needs two stone sword keys for the stranded graveyard. I wonder if he has those. Right. I believe he picked one up uh, on the ground here or in Stormvale. Or is it just one? Maybe just one? Yeah, I can't remember. He oh, doesn't, he doesn't have, have enough. He needs two. two. Okay. God, I love when I'm right. <laughs> uh, he does love when he's right. That's absolutely true. And Charge Dart 2 here does dink oh. off of the, uh, uh -oh. the Crystallion, though, because he doesn't have the intelligence, I believe. Oh, this is very awkward. There we hey, go, He gets though. the stagger anyways. Okay, okay, okay. So no big deal. And there we go. First Castrillion is... is here for uh, NPT. So unless unless NPT can pivot and you know kill three three tree spirits like way faster, it looks like Bushy is going to be able to secure the dub on this uh, on this match at you know probably about the one hour twenty mark. So, pretty efficient match here from Bushy. Yeah, yeah, 150. This is uh, definitely a, uh, one of the faster matches that, from this season, I would say, for sure. But still tense all the way through. Yeah, especially that early game. That early game wasn't really uh, uh, intense, uh, and especially with um, with how much there was back-to-back, -back, you know, when it came mm. to the early game of, like, okay... You could go for this now. Okay, well, if I get this, I can get that next square. You know, going from Cave and Grotto's with Bach synergy and then also uh, the NPC's synergy with Bach on top of that. Um, with with Bushy grabbing all of those, that was that was just massive for him, for sure. Also relieves a lot of pressure, you know? When you have a really strong early game, you can really kind of just, like, sink in and be like, okay, I've got pressure. I don't have to worry about currently mind gaming too hard. I don't have to worry about, you know, um, beating someone else to a different square. I can kind of just like sit back, read the board, make sure I'm not making any misplays and uh, pick the most efficient stuff rather than just being very reactive. Yeah, it's really interesting like that you mentioned that because, you know, whenever you are a calculated strategic player, it actually makes those early game squares matter that much more because, you know, Bushy really obviously, you know, he shines in a situation where he has time to think and when he has the ability to just sort of like, you know, make his plays, strategize, prep squares, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And those early games bought him the time to do all of that. Mm -hmm. I agree. Really gave him the luxury of of playing proactively, which obviously he he thrives on. I, I do wonder if we do see Bushy in a more reactive position, if he has trouble capitalizing on that. I mean, I think we kind of saw that with the Aggie versus Bushy match. Where, like, I think this, out of all of the matches for Bushy, this was probably his cleanest match, for sure. Very few mistakes, I think, if at all. Uh, I just, like, reading the board very well, making correct choices. As I mentioned, you know, even though MPT is going for blocks here and there, all the blocks he went for, Bushy wasn't considering anyways. Like, the, everything played pretty much into, into Bushy's favor in this case. Yeah, and like in terms of, you know, deaths and stuff like that, I, I, I recall he died on Tree Sentinel once, but yeah. outside of that, everything seemed very clean. Yeah. I, I we think just, we don't, need, we don't need to talk about the Celia skip, though. We, we can just... <laughs> Look, that, that's a, that skip is RNG, okay? That, that, that skip is uh, not just, a, 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 I feel like, a bushy mistake for sure. Like, I, I feel like a lot of people have a hard time. And NPT had, like, an amazing skip for that uh, today. Like, that was just super clean just very fluid movement and tom grabbing that two crystallian bosses square is going to 
uh, just validate Bushy's decision to go for the tree spirits here. Yeah, so he, I think he was going to go possibly for Mimic Tier Consumables only, just in case uh, it was possibly getting sniped. But seeing that the Crystallian bosses was just taken yeah. by NPT, he's like, okay, like I can I can complete this. Like he doesn't have any tree spirits done right now, so I can just go ahead and just finish this off real quick. Yeah, it gave him the information he needed to commit to that. That's interesting. I I think like that's another kind of invisible element of these matches is like a lot of players don't really consider the information they're giving their opponent as as highly as maybe they should. So mm -hmm. it's 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 something that's definitely come more into play this season than it did last season. Like I definitely hear players talking about like oh, I need to consider how much information I'm giving. But it's it's such a it's such, it's a level deeper on the strategy that like that's where you really get into like the chess mind games, you know, you because you, you, you have to think like how is my opponent going to react to this information? Yeah, and that's very difficult to do when you're also trying to like prep your own squares, prep your own lines, block opponent. Like th that's a layer deeper than is possible for a less experienced player for sure. And yeah, it looks like that NPT is going to go for Radon here. I guess maybe just to activate Mimic Tier Consumables only, but also having access to Landell Capital. And maybe just hoping that he might be blocking Bushy in this case. Thinking he's going to go for that long-term uh, bl uh, square rather than going for the Tree Spirit, which is a little bit closer. Yeah, I imagine he's looking at this board and he's thinking, if he's go if he's been going for Tree Spirits this whole time, there's no way I beat him. So I have to hope he's going for the slower square and that I managed to beat him to that because I already set up the advantage on uh, Radon. Because, you know, you think about it and like he had Crucible Night Misbegotten Warrior Duo way earlier on. He never saw how close Bushy got to getting that. Yeah. It's a little weird, though, that he never finished Crucible Knights because he, he could have easily done that. He had the elevator for it. He had the grace, right, for the one in Stormvale. Mm -hmm. He already beat the, uh, beat the one in the uh, Misbegotten Duo fight. All he had to do was the Ever Jail and the one in Stormville, which was not, that's not a huge time sink at all. That's like two minutes, three minutes tops. Well, you know, they say that uh, the three Crucible Knights square actually takes just as long as it takes to go for Moog. And so, you know, he probably factored that into his decision. Yeah, yeah. No, that's, that's, mm -hmm. that's, uh, mm -hmm. that's good old uh, Bingus literature, you know? Mm -hmm. And the, yeah, it's in the, uh, the, 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 the tales of old Bingus. I'm pretty sure. That's probably like one of my favorite things. Uh, the Tales of Old Bingus? Yeah, me too. <laughs> no, I don't know. For some reason, whenever I hear the word literature, I have to think about that one time when uh, there's like a there's like very popular like Joe Rogan clip of where he's like, uh, you know, chimps will go crazy and eat your face off. And if you don't know about that, you haven't been paying attention to the literature. <laughs> it's just, it's such That's... a whack sense, but it's so funny. Yeah. You, you got to keep up with the literature. Absolutely. <laughs> you got to pay attention, man. It is it is one of the weirdest sentences I've heard, but I love that sentence. It cracks me up every single time. And speaking of faces getting eaten off, Bushy has absolutely eaten the face off of that last final tree spirit and thus securing the 13th square GG Bushy with the victory. Huge move. Huge move. Absolutely massive. Very, very nice. And this this was honestly a very deceptively close game with how that early game went. Because with the early game squares, um, they really could have gone either way. Like that that two cave or grottos dungeons was an extremely close square for sure. And it just so happened to kind of tip the balance in favor of Bushy this time around. Yes, yeah, sir. And Bushy said he is ready. Let me bring in the Dubski player. Welcome in, Bushy. GG's, good sir. GG's. Thank you. Congratulations and well played. Yeah, I, I, I like how that one went. Yeah, that was uh, one hell of a game uh, from both of you. Uh, very strong early game, by the way, from you. Very interesting choices uh, as well uh, when it came to the Caves and Grottos. A little bit of a different um, approach than NPT. And, and like mm -hmm. it was very, very close between the both of you. you. You kind of went for the same thing, but also didn't. If that makes yeah. sense. Uh, I, I mean, it, this was a fast board, and NPT is a fast player. Yeah. I So I tried to do things just slightly differently, 
um, and like sacrificed some squares like consumables only for the sake of getting other more important squares like the like the caves or grottos um and it it worked out in my favor i'm assuming that I, i'm assuming he didn't have any sort of incident early on like that but if he did unlucky now i was yeah, ultimately uh, go ahead sorry go ahead Dom. Go oh ahead. my god no <laughs> go ahead go ahead josh that's all good ultimately i think you playing very unpredictably worked extremely well in that early game so major props for taking just kind of the slightly uh unexpected route and that paying off for you yeah yeah pretty much uh you both pretty much making the same choices but just using different targets uh made it very interesting because it, it didn't seem like there was a huge time difference between the two of you with NPT going for uh, both the consumables and then going for Demi Human Chief Duo as a second cave, and then you mm -hmm. doing uh, Soldier of Godric and Demi Human Chief instead. Uh, both of those being pretty much the same, uh, like time wise, uh, to where it was like a really, really close race, but that definitely benefiting you that you got that one and then getting everything else back to back afterwards uh, created a lot of pressure. Uh, was there like, yeah. a, a line that you were looking at or any like specific squares that you're kind of really aiming for to make sure that you continue that momentum? Um, based off, it, well, I mean, like I said, the early game was kind of just insane. So mm -hmm. I, it, it was, I knew it was just going to be a bunch of toe stepping and um, bingo threats were not going to be appearing until later. The first real one that I considered was the diagonal from top left to bottom right. Mm -hmm. um, yep. But at at the point where I was considering it, it was 4-1, and I, I was kind of thinking, like, uh, sacrificing all these squares to just get early alt this access seems like it, it could be throwing an already winning position, so I, I chose not to go for it. But if Tom had already claimed, like, the other fast squares, and it was, like, 4-4 four, four or something like that, I think I would have liked the look of it much better. That's fair. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, and when it comes to, like, the late game, by the way, and, like, the choices that you make, we were kind of talking about how, you know, sometimes when you are currently in the lead and all you have to do now is just push those last couple squares and just make sure that you don't get sniped on those, what is your thought process when it comes to that to make sure that the squares that you're aiming for are most likely not contested at that time? Yeah, so I I, I was saying this to my chat uh, when I was going for it, but uh, I killed two tree spirits and then I started going for a crystallian. And I was saying, oh, I bet Domo's chat is roasting me right now, saying, what are you doing? Why are you not going for the last tree spirit? But the idea is I only need to win one more square. Yeah. So if I just prep multiple, then that means if Tom does snipe one, I have a lead on the other. So I, I'm right. good either way. Right. Yeah. That's kind of what we're talking about, too, where it's kind of you can somewhat pick and choose see what you feel like is the best option or also just go for like the really really long game type of square to where it's very very unlikely that the other player is going to go for that mm -hmm. you know just go straight for two remembrances and go for Morgoth instead just to confirm that 13th square um yep but uh yeah overall really well played let me bring an npt here as well real quick uh welcome in npt ggs good sir ggs 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 that was a yeah, GG Tom. That was a very uh, in intense match, NPT. Uh, how, how do you feel about it overall? Uh, so I guess I made the wrong call at the start with consumables only. I was probably like two, three seconds off of Bach, like the um, the cave, the two cave and grottos. Something that I was really um, concerned that you would do, Tom, was get consumables only and then go for Soldier of Godric. Just to get that. That was the plan at first, but then I was like, I should, yeah, I probably should have done that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that, um, that obviously would have caused me some more problems. I think I still would have won Box Needle in that case. But yeah, yeah. You, you would have won Box Needle because apparently you did that first, mm -hmm. which your fight apparently was insane. Um,. Like, I don't know. I I got down pretty early. I was like, okay, I need to... I, I should have contested more of the early game squares. I was going to do friendly NPCs, but Vare was an asshole. And I just abandoned it. Then I switched to the wet blades and, like, trying to set up row one. Um, I probably should have went for catacombs and spirit ash more 
Sharper than Wet Blades. Uh, you went for Tree Sentinel. I didn't. I probably should have contested Tree Sentinel. Like I, I did die on Tree Sentinel. You did? Yeah. I should have contested Tree Sentinel. Uh, yeah, y'all had simultaneous yeah, deaths just, on Vare and Tree Sentinel there. I didn't die to Tree. I didn't fight Tree Sentinel. No, I mean, B Bushy died to Tree Sentinel and Tom died to Vare at the exact same time. Oh, uh, that's pretty funny. Yeah. Um, yeah, like, I think I just didn't stick with the plan that I normally do of like, all right, I'll, I'll rush the the faster squares because it's a fast board and I was going for more of like a sneaky play and trying to uh, block his stuff at the same time but the problem was I was already behind if I was ahead I could do that but I was already behind so it wasn't really the best play I should have went for three style I should have went for catacombs and spirit ash summon uh, I could I probably would have gotten three friendly NPCs if I just abandoned Vare and went for Alexander and Kenneth Height or Thops. Um and yeah, it would have been a different game. But I chose to like just completely abandon all the early squares for some reason and I, I was I was a little frustrated. I was frustrated that you got both Bach and the two cave grottos. I was like, how the how how did he do that? Because I had like a super clean consumables only. I grabbed the grace. I accidentally got up and sat back down to level up. And then he got box. He got the two cave and grottos like two seconds before I killed mine. And I was like, you gotta be kidding me. And then, it, and then he got box needle when I was about to teleport to box cave um, i i think i maybe could have done the caves or grottos faster by I, I had the first step grace i didn't have uh the church of ella but instead of doing um soldier of godric i think i could have ridden my horse to bofa a little bit faster i think that was a bit unoptimal for me maybe so i i do have like a question for y'all regarding crucible knights my little little pet theory about the three Crucible Knights square is that it's actually a trap square and takes almost as like with what I've seen in some of these matches, it takes people like sometimes as long as some of these late game squares just to finish that that one square. I don't know. What do you all think about actually finishing off that square in a match? Um, I mean, with boards that have like imbued sword keys um it feels a little bit better to go for or like even wet blades it can feel okay to go for um but yeah like getting the third crucible knight obviously there's one in stormvale there's one in the ever jail but getting the third one can definitely be a problem you either have to go up to the uh to the knockron teleporter in uh Lyurnia, or you have to do what tom did and go to the crucible knight and misbegotten warrior duo which without synergy yeah that, that takes a long time Right, right, right. Would you say that it takes about as long as the Moog Square by chance? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, right. exactly. That's what I thought too. Ah, but with that being said, though, guys, you know, GGs. It was a great game to watch. I think, I think both of you guys have really played extremely well. Um, even if there were incidents, I still think it was an amazing game. So I really re appreciate both of your time, uh, for this weekend. Um, and wish you best of luck next week and GG's again to, uh, to Bushy for taking the dub.